So what's the question? For which value uh, of the following values, or for, so which value of the following values of A will the spheres, and there's two spheres here, have disjoint interiors and touch in one point? Does anybody have the answer? What? Someone said A. Yes, we're trying to find A, but, but what value for A? A equals, two. A equals 2. OK, why does this work? Disjoint interior says we don't want them to overlap on their inside. So there's not a sphere inside of the other, but they have to touch. So we're trying to build a snowman. All right. So we say, OK, if that's going to happen, what needs to be true is that the distance between the centers has to be the same as the sum of the two radii. Well, we know these are circles, so we can read off their centers. We have the formula that gives us the distance between the centers. And we have the radii, and we can add those together. So we set the distance between centers equals the sum of the radii. And solve. Turns out there's two actual values for A that would have worked, but only one of them is an option. So A equals 2. Ah, good times, good times. I know some people got it. And uh, well, we'll keep working on this, right? We'll get better. We'll get better. Things are going to get better. All right. Well, the thought for today. From Jake the dog. In, in case you don't know, Jake the dog is a uh, collaborator of Finn the human. So what did Jake the dog say? Well, suck, sucking at something is the first step towards being sort of good at something. So it's OK if you're not great on the first day. We're going to help you get there. So don't be frustrated. Things will get better. Things will get better. All right, now, what's today? Well, we're going to continue working on our geometry. And so we're going to look at different ways to describe space. Last time we talked about Cartesian. We're going to do a few other ways today. So let's first do a, a, a throwback to 2D. We've done 2D before. We know how to describe points. And we actually have seen two ways to describe points in 2D. One is Cartesian, where I have a point here. And the way we describe a point is using two numbers. One we call x, which is how much we move in the direction we label as x. And one we call y. And so we have points, x, comma, y. So I would like to think that Cartesian is distance plus distance, which is to say, I'm going to describe everything by giving you two distances. But that's not the only way that we can do this. So an alternative is polar coordinates. OK, so what happens in polar? Well, we can have the same point. But now what we're going to do is describe it using a different set of numbers. Namely, we're going to think about the distance that the point is from our center, the origin, we'll call that number r, and an angle, which we'll call theta. So for polar coordinates, it's a distance plus an angle. All right. Now, we can see polar. There's sort of this intuitive thing as if you've ever seen radar. How does radar work? You have a central unit, usually a tower, and it's spinning this dish around, and it's collecting information. And what is it collecting? It's saying, well, which direction am I pointing, and how far away am I? So that's polar. So polar works in that manner. Now, which one is the right one? Well, the answer is whichever one you're most comfortable with. And it oftentimes depends on the problem. Oftentimes, we're very comfortable with Cartesian. But uh, both have their place. Now the question is, OK, both describe space, but can we go back and forth? Well, yes, you can. So what you do is you cross your eyes. Like if you've ever seen those 3D pictures where if you cross your eyes, it's like, whoa, these aren't just random dots. That's awesome. OK, so we're going to overlap everything. We have our theta. We have our r. We have our x. We have our y. Say, all right, great. 
Now we look at the picture and say, what are some things which are true? Well, we have a right triangle. Lots of things are true about right triangles. What are some things true about right triangles? Well, they have a right angle. It's true. Sorry, what? Right, we have trig. Yes. And uh, so we use trig, even probably simpler than trig, the oldest theorem, the Pythagorean theorem. Well, it's not the oldest theorem, but it's, it's certainly one of the oldest ones. So we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That one will make a comeback in our lecture. Somebody mentioned trig. We have an angle and three sides. So we can talk about x. Now, if I think about x, x is the adjacent side. I can use my hypotenuse. And then the cosine theta, well, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that leads us to x equals r cosine theta. And in a similar way, if I use the opposite side, well, that's y. So y over the hypotenuse. And then if I multiply through, we get y equals r sine theta. All right, so this allows us to go back and forth. And these are all things that we should keep in mind. All right, so that's 2D. Good, good. Any questions on that? Okay. Let's go to 3D. Okay. On to the third dimension. Putting on our 3D glasses. So, do we have a way to describe points in 3D that we know about already? X, Y, Z. So, we still have our Cartesian. So, we have our same space as before. So, I, I should say, this is a, a, a philosophical side note, we're not changing our space. When we talk about our discussion today, Space is space. What we are changing is how we describe space. So that's the thing is we're not changing the fact that we're in three dimensions. We're just changing how we describe things. All right. So, okay. So we have a, a point. Let's say here's our point here. And we, we move some amount in the x direction. We move some amount in the y direction. And we move some amount in the z direction. And we get a point x, y, z. So Cartesian is, whoops, distance plus distance plus distance. Three distances make up Cartesian. All right. Well, that's great. And now we say, can we do anything else? Well, we notice that if we think about this picture here for Cartesian, I have z coming off of the x, y plane. And the xy plane is 2D. We know how to do things in 2D in different ways. So what we can do is we can think of like, all right, let's work on the plane. Let's use the polar in the plane. And then we'll use z to tell us how far we go off the plane. And so the next system, again, we'll have our, our same point. It's our same location in space. But now what we'll do as we have z is how far we come off, and then r and theta down here in the xy plane. This is called cylindrical. We'll talk about why we call it cylindrical. But now what do we have? Well, we have r and z are distances. They tell us how far to move. Theta is not a distance. So theta is a direction. So it's a direction plus a distance plus a distance. So that's cylindrical. All right, good. Well, and uh, I should pause and make sure we write this down, because then it's more likely we'll remember that. When you think of cylindrical, think of it as polar plus z. That's, that's what cylindrical coordinates are. It's really polar coordinates down in the xy plane, and then z is telling us how far we go in the xy plane. But we can do more. And there's one more we're going to talk about, one more we're going to use. And the last one says, okay, think back to 2D. 
in 2D, we had polar, which says, I just start from the origin and I move out to my point. I move directly to my point. Wouldn't that be cool if we could do that in 3D? Yes, we can. All right, so the last idea is called spherical. All right, so again, we have our space. And now we have to be a little bit careful about how we mark things here. So let's see if I can do this right the first time. We have our point. And we're going to go directly to our point. So I have to go out a certain distance. Rho. But now it's like, well, how do I describe that direction? Okay, so I'm going to describe it by a combination of angles. One angle is called phi. And phi measures how far off the positive z-axis you come. The other angle, I'll mark using a, a different color here, is imagine you were to drop straight down into the plane and you could say, ah, what angle do I have down here? I'll call it theta. Now, this is not a coincidence. This theta that you see in cylindrical matches with this theta that you see in spherical. It, in the same way that this z that you see in cylindrical matches with that z that you see in Cartesian. These match up. They're measuring the same thing. So intuitively, theta is we're rotating left and right. And then phi is, is telling us how much we need to move up and down. Between those two actions, you can specify a theta and a phi, and that can get us pointing in any direction from the origin. And then once we're pointing the right way, off we go, our distance to our point row, and there we are. All right, so there's a couple of comments we should make here. There are some implicit assumptions that we make about theta, phi, rho, r. One of these assumptions, well, usually, if we're playing by the rules, because if you think about what theta is doing here, it's saying it's how much to spin. But we don't want to say, oh, spin a bunch of times. We just want you to spin within one circle. So we make some assumptions about theta. Namely, it's uh, between 0 and 2 pi. Oftentimes we say theta less than or equal to 0, less than 2 pi. And in a similar way, we assume r is greater than or equal to 0. So the same assumptions over here for theta. 0 less than or equal to theta less than 2 pi. Rho has to be greater than or equal to 0. And I know rho looks suspiciously like a p, but it is what it is. Uh, on a side note, I've been told that in some engineering disciplines, what we call theta and phi, they swap. And they call it phi and theta. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, but you're young, you're smart. You'll figure it out. It's just a, a mapping. Now, phi, we should talk about phi. So, so phi, oh, oh, oh I, I forgot my notes. I should have pointed this out. OK, so spherical is direction plus direction plus a distance. So two directions and distance. Now, now phi. We'll, we'll put lots of notes here. Phi is angle off the positive z-axis. <coughs> OK, all right. Well, that's helpful. So where is phi equal 0? Straight up. It's the positive z-axis. I haven't come off at all. So phi equals 0 is straight up. Where is phi equal pi? Straight down. Because pi would say you've turned halfway around. So you're pointing straight down. So phi equals pi is straight down. So phi will be between 0 and pi. Now, question. Where is 
Pi halves. So phi equals pi halves. Do we have a name for it? Ah, someone said on the xy plane. I like that answer. You can improve it by removing the word on. The xy plane is phi equals pi halves. So phi equals pi halves is the whole xy plane. All right, good. Uh, all right. I've said a lot without asking if people have questions. So maybe we should pause for a second and say, do people have questions? How are you doing? off the positive z-axis, right. theta also just off the positive x-axis? Yes, theta is off the positive x-axis, yes, that is correct. It's, it works in the same way as, as in polar. So the theta in polar is the same theta that you see in cylindrical and spherical. So if, if your phi is at pi, is that still on the positive since it's going down? Well, for phi equals pi, you've spun, and now you're going, you went from going up the z-axis, now you're going down the z-axis. We don't go past it because we've already covered that. So if I want to be going this way, I can think of it as I first take phi over here, and then I can use theta to spin me around. So between the combination of theta and phi, where theta and phi run between these, I can go get pointing in any direction I need. Anything else? Yes? Uh, we can choose normally what, what axes are like x, y, and z. Can we choose what axes theta and phi come off of? Or does it always have to be z and x? We can't use like we can't have theta come off as y. Well, if you're an engineer and a physicist, do whatever you like. But in math class, <laughs> yeah. So we have a convention, and we just want to make sure we all agree on the conventions. So we're going to think of phi by convention is coming off the positive z axis. X by convention is coming off the positive x axis. All right. Good. Uh, a couple of things we can do, and uh, let's see, I probably will not be able to do this very well, but let's, let's see if we can, can mark, draw some pictures here. Okay, so I'll, I'll label my axes just for convenience, x, y, z. So if I'm in Cartesian, I can ask questions such as what do level surfaces look like. So in other words, I'm going to say, what happens if I look at z equals a number? What, what do I get in Cartesian? So like z equals 5, what does that look like? It, it's like an xy plane, but you just shift it up. So you get something like z equals a constant, looks like a plane. What if I look at, say, x equals a constant? What does that look like? Yeah, it's the zy plane. You just moved it. So this is x equals a constant. All right, what if I looked at, say, y equals a constant? Well, you can kind of see where this is going. Y equals a constant, looks like a plane. It's a box, yes, it's a box. Oh my gosh. So sometimes people call Cartesian coordinates rectangular coordinates. And so why do we like Cartesian coordinates? Well, because we like rectangles. We're really, really comfortable with rectangles. They're some of our, our closest friends are rectangles. So that's one of the reasons why we like it so much. And we'll see that especially once we start getting into integration. Okay, let's talk polar. All right, x, y, z, again, just for reference, even though obviously we're using our, our r and theta and z. So first off, let's start with something we're familiar with. What will z equal a constant look like? z equals a constant? will look like the same thing it looks like before. Because it's the same kind of measurement. I'm measuring the same thing. So z equals a constant is a plane. OK, well, that's good. What about, uh, let's say, r equals a constant? 
Cylinder. Okay, cool. Now, what is R? Oftentimes, we think of R, if we think polar, that was our intuition, it's how far removed from the center. Well, that's in the, the plane, right? But when I talk about, I let R be fixed, but I let theta and phi be anything, well, really, R can be thought of how far I'm moving off from the z-axis. So what happens here is we're going to get a cylinder with the z-axis down the center. So R equals a constant. Looks like a cylinder. Oops, R equals a constant. Okay. I should probably shade this to cylinder so it looks like a cylinder. All right. Well, what other variable do we have? Theta. Okay, so what does theta equal a constant look like? Well, it says we're going out in a fixed direction. But of course, we go out the same way. So it's sort of a half plane, a half plane coming off the z-axis. So this is theta equals some fixed value. There's a rotate around, yeah. So if you change theta, you're sweeping the, that plane around. And that plane's kind of just infinite? Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, I ran out of paper. Yeah. So we don't have the budget. All right. So now, why do you think we call it cylindrical coordinates? Because it's so easy to describe cylinders. OK, so that's why cylindrical. Now, I, I should add something here that not only does it work great for cylinders, this is, this is your go-to for anything with rotational symmetry. So if you see anything and it's like, oh, this has beautiful rotational symmetry, and I'm talking about rotating around the z-axis when I say rotational symmetry, you want to go and use this coordinate system. Okay. And in particular, and I don't have space, so I'm going to move this up for a second, I like to oftentimes, when I'm working on a problem that involves uh, the cylindrical coordinate system, I like to work in what's called the RZ plane. But what is the RZ plane? Well, I really like to think of it as this theta equals a constant. I'm just taking a slice. And if I have any problem where theta is not involved, I say, OK, just take a slice. And what does it look like? Now, the nice thing about taking a slice is now instead of a 3D picture, I have a 2D picture. And that's a little bit easier for me to work with. So the RZ plane, what happens is we have R and Z. So this is that theta equals C slice. And now I can say, OK, what is the relationship between R and Z? What's happening in a cross section? And once I understand that, then I say, great, now spin. So a lot of problems that you have, if, the, if there is rotational symmetry, think about working in the RZ plane, understand what's happening there, and then add your spin. OK, spherical. OK, so our last coordinate system to go through for this exercise, x, y, z. All right, we had our three parameters. One of them is easy. Which one can we do automatically? Well, z is not in here, so spherical is phi, theta, rho. Which one can, is a freebie? Theta is a freebie because it does the same thing. So theta is you, you just you take that sort of slice. So this is theta equals a fixed constant. All right, that leaves us with rho and phi. So let's talk rho. Rho is distance to origin. Because that's how we describe rho. It's you move out distance rho. But you move out from the origin. So rho is a distance to the origin. So if I say rho is a fixed number, then I want all the points that are that number away, that distance away from the origin. What is that making? A sphere. Oh. Well, maybe that's why it's called spherical. And you're correct. That is why it's called spherical. So rho equals a constant. 
is a, you get a, a sphere. And so in particular, spherical coordinates are great for spheres. That's almost all they're good for. The good thing is lots of things are spheres, are sphere-like enough that it does show up in, in applications. Now, last thing is phi. Phi is, say, a fixed number. Let's say phi equals pi fourths just for reference. What would that look like? So phi equals pi fourths would say I come off pi fourths. So that angle is pi fourths. And then spin. So it's, it's, it's a nice cone. So phi equals a constant, you get a cone. So I guess I, I should say, if you have things that are spheres and cones, spherical is good. Anything with rotational symmetry, cylindrical is great. If you like rectangles, go with the, your, your Cartesian. An oldie but a goodie. All right. Well, we need to talk about converting. How do we switch between the different systems? Okay, let's do that. Now, when we did conversion for 2D, what did we start by doing? Yeah, well, we put everything on top of each other. So let's see how these relate. So what are we going to do? We're just going to put everything on top of each other. And hopefully you can trust me. You can check your notes to see if I get this right. Okay, so we'll try to draw a good sized picture here. We, we have our point. All right, so we have our x, our y, our z. We also will have at the same time and we'll put little right angles here just to emphasize where things are right angles. Down in the xy plane, uh, I want to choose a different color. Oh, okay, here we go. This is different enough. Down here we have our r. We have our theta. And we also have this distance rho, which is from the origin straight to your point, and this angle phi. All right, well, what are equations that we have available to us? Now, I'll tell you, a couple of them are freebies. We already wrote some down. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. x equals r cosine theta. y equals r sine theta. Where did these come from? These are polar, right? And it's just two-dimensional. Okay, there's also one that's almost a freebie. We might have to think for a second. I claim rho squared equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Why is that? Where does that come from? It's the distance formula. It's the distance, because rho is the distance to the origin, and, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared, well, it's the distance to the origin squared. Uh, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is the distance to the origin squared of the point x, y, z. All right. The last two that we need, well, not quite the last two. There's four more, and then we'll have everything. There's a, there's a fun little trick. This angle is the angle off the positive z axis. It turns out it matches this angle here. So that's also phi. Now, if you say y, well, you can say this angle plus this angle here would have to do what? It'd have to add up to a right angle. You could say they're very complementary to each other. Ah, you're looking wonderful today. Well, thank you. Have you lost weight? <sighs> ah, no, but thanks anyways. <laughs> All right. Now, this angle and this angle, what else is true? they also add up to 90. And so by combining those two ideas, you get that these two angles are the same. Now, what do we have? A right triangle, an angle, and have all three sides. So just as we did before, we get the following. So this is, this is a right triangle. And uh, 
we'll say that z, okay, so z is the adjacent side. Does that involve sine or cosine? Cosine. So it's the hypotenuse times your cosine. R is your opposite side. So that's hypotenuse times sine. Okay, so this is, we'll do a little bit of trig. One last thing is we're going to do what's called combining, which says this is R. These equations have R. Let's put that into there. And if we do that, we get the following. X equals rho sine phi cosine theta. Because I'm just plugging in what R is. Y equals rho sine phi sine theta. This is, this is the, the combo one. Now, in terms of what you should know, I hope you know polar. I think it's pretty easy to convince yourself of rho squared. And this is not too bad. I don't remember these. I just remember how to get them. I say, well, once I know r, I put them in to this formula, and life is good. All right. Whew. Good. We got through the material. Start, need to start doing some practice. Any questions on? how we change. Okay. So, give, I think it should have been given, but oh well. Given the point, one, one, root six. Uh, oh no, it, it should be give. Oh good, I do speak English. Give the point one, one, root six in cylindrical and spherical coordinates. So in other words, this is a point x, y, z. And we want to describe it in cylindrical and spherical co coordinates. So we don't have to draw accurate pictures, but we can pretend like we can draw accurate pictures. So 1 over an x, 1 over an y, and then up root 6. So here's our 1, 1, root 6. So what do we need to find? If we're cylindrical, what is it we're looking for? What three values do we need? Yeah, we need uh, theta, r, z. If we're spherical, what three values do we need to find? Theta, phi, rho. Theta, phi, rho. Okay, which, one's, which one do you want to start with? Do we have any freebies? We have z. What is z? <coughs> Root 6. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well... Our freebies are done. Where to next? R. Yes, I know. Channel our inner pirate. R. Okay, so R, we're down here in the XY plane. So this is at the point where we moved one over here and we moved one over there. And now the question R is what's that length? X squared plus Y squared. Well, yeah, X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. So what would R be? Root two. Root two. How about theta? So theta is the angle in the corner here. What angle do we see there? 45, but we're calculus pi over four. All right, spherical. Do we know anything for spherical yet? Yes. Nice. Okay. Well, okay, we got theta. Uh, is there anything else that we can find without too much work? Rho. Okay, so what's rho going to turn out to be? So, right, so here's rho. It's the distance from the origin to that point. So, 1 squared plus 1 squared plus root 6 squared. 8, take the square root of that. Square root of 8. Okay, so what's left? Phi, pi, fo, fum. Now, if we, if we zoom in on this picture, we, we can say, okay, what do we really have here? We know the base here is root two. The hypotenuse, that's our 
root 8. Uh, by the way, is there another way to, to say root 8? Uh, two root 2. Cool. Well, that would be if we were nice. Do you think we're really that nice? No. Well, we are. In lecture. <laughs> Not on exams or quizzes. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry. Uh, where's phi? Uh, phi is this angle up here. Okay, so we have to figure out what angle does that. And someone actually saw right away. They said, well, we, we know the opposite side. We know the hypotenuse. So we could say, well, the thing that relates them is sine. Sine of phi is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is a half. And there is an angle. Sine of that angle gives a half. And that angle is pi over 6. So it is a, indeed a 30, 60, 90 triangle. All right. See? That's not so bad. We're not going to give you crazy angles. I hope. I hope. Okay. Okay. How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. How much time do I need to leave you for that last one? How hard is that last one? Oh. Oh. Okay. This is not the last one. But I haven't given you a chance to work a problem yet. So let's have you work a problem really quickly. Rewrite rho equals 1 over cosine phi plus sine phi in cylindrical coordinates. Now, by the way, why, why do we need to rewrite it? What is it currently written in? It's in spherical. How do you know it's in spherical? You see rho and you see phi. If you see a rho or a phi, it has to be spherical. So, okay, we have this equation in spherical. We want it in cylindrical. So you need to find a way, somehow, some way to rewrite this in cylindrical coordinates. And then, if you can, sketch it. So this is a, a bit of a sketchy problem here. Okay. Can anybody give me the formula? Let's, so it should be in cylindrical corner, so the, the answer should involve some combination of zr and theta. Now, it doesn't have to involve all of them, but you should only have zrs and thetas involved. Can anybody give me the answer, let's say, in terms of z? Z equals something. Z equals 1 minus r. Z equals 1 minus r. <coughs> okay, so what do you do? Now... Let's start with the tip here, a pro tip. Fractions are dangerous. It's good to get rid of them if possible. I have a, an aversion to fractions because I've lost too many points to fractions. And so it's like, all right, well, let's multiply to get rid of the fractions. So then that leaves us with rho cosine phi plus rho sine phi equals 1. But wait a second. We have a formula where rho cosine phi shows up. That's z. We have a formula where rho sine phi shows up. That's r. And so z plus r equals 1, or z equals 1 minus r. What does it look like? Well, there's no theta. Work in the rz plane, right? If you're in cylindrical coordinates and there's no theta, work in the rz plane. So we sketch z equals 1 minus r. Well, that's not hard to sketch. At r equals 0, you're at 1, and then you're going down. Now you spin. And when we talk about spinning, we talk about spinning around the z-axis. So if you spin that line, you get an upside-down cone. So this is an upside-down cone. And there we go. Fun problems, right? Good times, good times. OK. Let's try another one as a group. OK. Sketch the region consisting of the points satisfying. Phi goes between 0 and pi over 4. And rho goes between 0 and 2. And also express this region in terms of cylindrical coordinates. All right. Well, what, what system are we in? We're in spherical. OK, so let's talk about we really have two pieces here. So we'll talk about the pieces separately. So let's handle the phi. So phi 
is telling us we, we can go from 0 to pi over 4. So if we sketch phi equals pi over 4, what do we get? We get a cone. So this is phi equals pi over 4. Now, if I can let phi be anything between 0 and pi over 4, where am I? I? Am I in the cone or am I below the cone? You are in the cone because phi equals 0 is pointing straight up, and then you keep moving across. So we are the cone. All right, now the other part. 0 less than or equal to rho, less than or equal to 2. What does that look like? Well, let's start with rho equals 2. What does rho equal 2 look like? It's a sphere. Now, if I'm 0 less than or equal to rho, less than or equal to 2, what am I including? Am I the inside or the outside? Inside. You're the inside. Now, we have to satisfy both of these. So now, how do we satisfy both? Well, what we do is we, again, we can cross our eyes and say, what do these look like? What's the overlap? Well, the overlap has the following form. It's going to be the cone coming up. Oh, let me switch colors. And then, it's going to be a piece of a sphere on top. So that's the region. It, it's roughly ice cream cone after you've, you've been working on it for a while, getting the top down a bit. OK. All right. And uh, OK, what about expressing this in terms of cylindrical coordinates? Well, we can do that, but we have something to our advantage. What do you notice about this shape? It has symmetry around the z-axis. So whenever you have symmetry around the z-axis, cylindrical coordinates work great. You're slicing, and slicing brings you into your rz plane. OK, so rz. So what does the cone, when we slice, what does the cone look like? It's a straight line, 45 degrees. Can you think of the equation in terms of z and r for that line? Z equals r. And we want to be above it. Now, when you slice that sphere, what are you going to get? You get half, this, half of it, right? So you're going to get a circle, and the radius will be 2. And we want to be on the inside of that. What's the equation for this circle? Well, it's r squared plus z squared equals 2 squared, 4. But I really just care about the top part, so I'll solve for z. It's the square root of 4 minus r squared. I'm the positive part because I'm on top. So the overlap, well, I need to be above r, and I need to be below this, so we have that r less than or equal to z, less than or equal to the square root of 4 minus r squared. And that's what it'll look like in cylindrical coordinates. OK, we have a couple minutes left, which means it's our time for our final multiple choice problem of the day. The following equation gives a sphere using spherical coordinates, because of course, spherical coordinates are great for spheres. Rho equals 2 sine phi sine theta minus 4 sine phi cosine theta plus 16 cosine phi. The center of the sphere in Cartesian coordinates is which point? OK, what's our first step? What is our first thing we should do to help solve this problem? Multiply everything by rho. Because then we can get rho squared, rho sine phi sine theta, rho sine phi cosine theta, rho cosine phi. We can get back to things we're comfortable with, and our center is negative 218. So there we go. There we go.